well, you know, if they do manage to kill Geronimo, first of all, they're not going to find anything in there and they're going to have to admit to the world that there was actually no infection. Um, but before that, they still have to justify to me that what they did was actually scientifically valid. Uh, the fact is they can't do that. That's why we've been having these conversations for four years. There is no science, and I'm still calling on George Eustace to come and sit down and explain to me, with his senior scientists, where that data is. Because we all know, and the British Alpaca Society know, that they haven't done the research. Uh, bring us right up to date, because you only have to look at the front of the newspapers this morning to see that, uh, well, the execution is a sort of looming at the moment. Um, have you managed to keep people off your farm so far? Yeah, we have. Um, I haven't seen any of the press today, I must admit. Um, what I have heard is that Mr Eustace has um, made up some interesting stories about what actually happened to Geronimo, none of which are actually accurate. So how can you have a suspicion of disease? when you don't even know what happened to him. Okay, uh, it, well, it, um, I, read, um, I read some of the, um, in fact, it was written by George Eustace himself, uh, an opinion piece in one of the papers today explaining um, what he believed was your theory about why it could possibly have been a false positive. But as far as, as a high court uh, has been concerned, uh, those two test results of dear old Geronimo have come back positive. And unfortunately, that means one thing and one thing alone, which is that unfortunately he must be put down. Uh, well, I just still dispute that. I mean, the, the law, all of the legal processes were looking at the law. They weren't looking at the science. And the, the truth is that the DEFRA knew that there was a problem with his test 2016 before Geronimo was tested. And they told me it was a false positive and he would be retested. Had they have used the test as it was validated, then you know, we wouldn't be sitting here today, but what they did was, is knowing there was concerns with his tuberculin injections and this particular test, they forced him to have more tuberculin. Um, and they changed the, the goalposts on that retest with the prior knowledge that they already had. And that's been the dispute. Uh, so what we've been asking for is a proper evidence review um, and the you know, opportunity to look at this case from a research perspective and understand what's happened. Um, all attempts to speak to George Eustace about this over four years have been ignored. So, you know, we end up in this situation where they don't have a suspicion of disease based on valid science. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, George Eustace doesn't even know what he's had had. Well, OK, I mean, look, you're a veterinary nurse, so you know a great deal about these sorts of things. Um, I've been reading up about it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the tests for, for TB are incredibly accurate. 0.34% come back <laughs> with false positives. And the fact that you had two tests showing tuberculosis means that, unfortunately, it's a very strong indicator that Geronimo right. has bovine tuberculosis, which, of course, we know is hugely infectious and dangerous in, in cattle. Yes, so why is, why is Geronimo still standing in the field four years later? Why is it that every, every piece of evidence we have says he's never been exposed to uh, TB in New Zealand, which is where he came from? And why is it that George Eustace is quoting uh, test data from a test that Geronimo didn't have? It's okay. absolute rubbish. Well, I, I can't um, clarify whether or not he has misquoted the dates, but I can give you a statement from him. Uh, George Eustace has told us, that, and of course he was a former farmer. I didn't know this about him. His father uh, used to be a, a cattle farmer in Devon. Yeah. He said um, he knew it was soul-destroying to put animals down, but it was necessary as bovine TB was, as he described it, an insidious disease. He said there's been a great deal of focus on the case of Geronimo, uh, the alpaca, last week. However, each week on average, we have to remove more than 500 cattle from herds due to infection in England alone. Behind every one of those cases is a farmer who has suffered loss and tragedy. Farmers understand that infected animals are a risk to the remainder of their herds. So while the loss of individual animals is always a tragedy, farming communities have worked with our government vets in this arduous but necessary endeavour. So I suppose my question to be to you, so my question to you would be, why should you be special when so many farmers are having to um, put down so many of their animals? We understand that you are very attached to Geronimo, but the rules have to be for everyone, don't they? Well, then the rules have to be fair. And Geronimo came from New Zealand from a healthy herd which had no TB for 26 years. What George Eustace is talking about is endemic English TB, which has not been controlled. 
uh, and that's down to government policy. That has actually nothing to do with this specific case, which is about misuse of science and misuse of position by senior government officials to manipulate a test to produce a so-called positive result by interpretation only. This is a completely different matter. I have every sympathy with uh, any farmer that has TB in their herd, and if I had it, I would also be euthanizing my animals. But the fact is, the Geronimo is a perfectly healthy animal with there's no evidence of disease whatsoever. And the only basis they have is for this, this misused test, which their own scientists cannot provide any evidence to justify. Well, uh, as I say, it has been decided in a high court um, that, unfortunately, he must be put down. What are your plans um, if that happens? I think it has to happen within a certain window of about 28 days. Uh, have you, you know, made up a plan of, of how you will, will, will deal with that scenario? Well, you know, if they do manage to kill Geronimo, first of all, they're not going to find anything in there and they're going to have to admit to the world that there was actually no infection. Um, but before that, they still have to justify to me that what they did was actually scientifically valid. Uh, the fact is they can't do that. That's why we've been having these conversations for four years. There is no science, and I'm still calling on George Eustace to come and sit down and explain to me, with his senior scientists, where that data is, because we all know, and the British Alpaca Society know, that they haven't done the research. This is obviously incredibly distressing for you, but if I was in your shoes, what I would do, if I was adamant that there was no TB in the animal, I, I would pay for a second opinion, a, a private test. Why haven't you done that? Um, that's a really good question, and it's something that we've been asking for for four years. Um, unfortunately, I can't test an animal for TB, and neither can anyone else, unless they have the express written permission of the Secretary of State. So... Guess who that is? George Eustace. But and I'm, think, if I test him myself, why do you think there's I'm almost a cover up? Why, why do you believe that George Eustace is, is determined to make sure your animal is killed? What's he got against Geronimo? It sounds like a conspiracy theory almost. <laughs> um, he, what, what they want to do is avoid a precedent. This, there was no precedent here. No, no one is going to import a healthy animal from New Zealand having had five injections of tuberculin and give it this test going forward. This is blatant misuse of, of, of scientific knowledge uh, by DEFRA. And I think, I believe that they concocted the second test scenario in order to justify, and I have a quote that actually confirms that they knew they were deviating from protocol in order to reassure the client that the test was indeed positive. Now, they admitted that four months after they concocted this, it forced me to have this second test against my wishes. Um, and they did that to create a suspicion of disease, which in law, of course, they have the upper hand. Well, goodness me, it certainly so it captured the imagination really of the press. And in fact, Geronimo, very good looking alpaca, has attracted lots of fans and attention. What sort of support have you been receiving in the last few weeks or indeed years? Oh, massive. Well, initially, just three years ago, uh, well, initially we had very good support from the British Alpaca Society because it soon became apparent that there was a problem with this test. Uh, going forward, um, we have had amazing support from around the world. The camelid community, you know, alpacas and llamas, is quite a small one worldwide, and everyone understands what the issue is here. We're not comparing cattle and, live, and, and alpacas here. They're two completely different species. And Geronimo didn't fail a validated test. So um, everyone can see the sort of issues here in regards to wanting a science-based approach and also a fair approach. And so the support we've had has been absolutely incredible. I had no idea this week would turn out how it has. And, you know, when there's animals injustice, I think it's brought everybody together to, to recognise that there's a genuine concern here. You know, this isn't about a kill-at-all-cost policy to remove animals willy-nilly. We have to look at the science. We have to sit down. And we have to plan a way out. There's endemic disease in this country that needs dealing with. Um, and going around just making stuff up to get animals dead and out off the desk is, is not the way to do it. And just lastly, Helen, you know, Geronimo has been in your, in your farm for four years. How attached are you to him? What will it mean to you if the worst does happen? Um, I'm attached to him in the same way that I'm attached to 
all of the alpacas in my herd. I think if I lost him now, it, it would be very, very difficult to deal with from the point of view that I know he's, he's healthy. I know they don't have any evidence and I'm a veterinary nurse and, you know, we, we look after animals to the best of our ability. And whilst we're involved in euthanizing animals when they are suffering or to ease suffering, you know, it's, it's unjustifiable to kill a healthy animal when there is so much doubt as to the, the health status of this boy. If we could use a test that will measure the, what's going on and actually look for the TB in the bloodstream now, we would have a clear yes or no answer. And at the end of the day, if George uses to pick up the phone and have a conversation and we can move this forward positively, then we can have an outcome that benefits everybody going forward. Well, Helen McDonald's clearly a distressing issue for you. And, you know, nobody likes to see uh, animals or hearing about animals uh, being put down. So uh, look, we appreciate you coming on talking to us here on GB News. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.